Hello and welcome everyone. I am so excited to welcome everyone here today joining our conversation with artist Mike Henderson. My name is Beth Spotswood. I am the digital editor of Alta Journal. I produce Alta Live and I am again just delighted to welcome you. Our guest, Mike Henderson, was profiled in this current issue of Alta Journal by journalist Marcus Crowder. If you haven't had a chance to read Marcus's article, it is an absolute joy to read. But um, let me give you a, a little, a brief lay of the land of Mike's work. Mike is a pioneering artist, filmmaker, and musician whose dynamic practice has spanned more than 50 years. Born and raised in Marshall, Missouri, he moved to the Bay Area to attend the San Francisco Art Institute in 1965. He received his MFA from the San Francisco Art Institute in 1970. In addition to painting, he is an accomplished blues guitarist and filmmaker. His experimental short films have been screened at venues throughout the world. Mike is the recipient of a Guggenheim Fellowship, a National Endowment for the Arts Artist Grant, an Artadia Award, and the Margaret Mondavi Arts Medallion. Um, current exhibitions, in fact, there are two you can see right now, include his first museum retrospective, Before the Fire. That's at the Minetti Shrem Museum of Art at UC Davis, and Chicken Fingers at the Haynes Gallery. Those are both running right now. His works have been collected by such institutions as the Crocker Art Museum in Sacramento, Fine Arts Museums of San Francisco, the Shrum Museum of Art at UC Davis, Oakland Museum of California, San Francisco Mo Museum of Modern Art, and the Studio Museum in Harlem, New York. You may have even seen his work at Harvey Milk Terminal 1 at San Francisco International Airport. So it's just an incredible body of work over the past five decades. Before we begin our chat with Mike, some brief housekeeping. Alta Live is the digital interview series we do here at Alta Journal. If you are unfamiliar with Alta, we are an award-winning quarterly magazine focused on California and the West. You can join us as a member for as little as $3 a month and support the work we do, including the California Book Club. Tomorrow, we're excited to welcome Les author Andrew Sean Greer in conversation with John Freeman and special guest Michael Chabon. Um, events like this are free. If you haven't yet joined Alta as a member, I, I so encourage you to do so and check us out. There's a Q&A button at the bottom of the screen to ask as many questions of Mike Henderson um, as you want. We will try, we'll chat for about 30 minutes and get to those um, if we have time. This video will be, this interview will be recorded and posted to altaonline.com later today. We'll send you an email with a, a video, a link to the video, a link to the two exhibitions you can go visit right now, Marcus's article and more. So with that, it is so great to be here with our community today. Please tune in in the chat and let us know where you're zooming in from. I see we already have a, a former student, Cheryl. I'm one of your former students at Davis, Mike. Um, but I am here in Nevada, California. So let us know where you're zooming in from. Mike Henderson, I'm I'm honored to welcome you today. Thank you so much for joining us. Well, thank you for having me. And where are you right? Are you in your studio? Where are you? Yeah, I'm in my studio in San Leandro out here in the backyard, my dog house. <laughs> Can you, you've had such a long career um, as an artist and kind of specifically as a California artist. Um, can you tell me a little bit about when you discovered both an excitement for art and an ability for it? How old were you? Were, were you born painting or was this something that developed over time? It was something that I just naturally did. You know, I used to get weapons for drawing on the wall or drawing on my notebook paper, or drawing in class instead of, as they say, paying attention. But I was paying attention to what I was drawing, but <laughs> I didn't understand that. But anyway, uh, that was sort of how it was. My uncle, who, who uh, when I first heard the word artist, you know, because when you're a kid, you're growing up, you know, what are you going to be? You know, you're, you're the cowboy that you saw at the last show at Saturday at the movie or something, or, you, or a fireman or a cop or this or that, you know, growing up, you know, and um, mine, I didn't know what, so I was choosing all these other things. And one day when I heard the word artist, my uncle mentioned, and I said, uh, what is that? He says, that's somebody who draws and paints. 
And I knew at that moment that it was, uh, you know, there was something uh, that was there that was for people who drew and painted or, or had this passion for it, you know. Otherwise, I didn't see it. You know, I saw pictures, but I didn't know how they were done, you know, and so forth. But it was, my journey was to find out if that, that love I had, it was it just something, was it puppy love or was there something deeper, you know? And I um, eventually came to San Francisco, to go to the San Francisco Art Institute uh, in the 60s to uh, see if it was in me. And uh, it's an ongoing quest to see if it's in you, you know, because uh, um, it, it isn't over till it's over. You know, and you have to just keep uh, working because, uh, you know, it could leave you at any time. And you have to really be uh, uh, pay attention to this to the gift or whatever it is that's in you. You know, if it's calling or whatever it is, you have to pay attention to it and listen to it. Because like I said, again, it will leave you. And uh, when you, you learn to respect that, and that's what keeps you going because you then you're always developing and you're always moving you're always uh letting the work come out of you pass through you and grow with it did you ever that's feel it. that the work was leaving you was that ever an issue i mean it, we've, you've been in a professional yes. artist for 50 years yes you know uh after every painting you wondering if you could do if i could do another one when i get back to it is it's the last one because you you don't know you know it's like you don't know when it's going to walk out of you you know was it just a temporary thing like a puppy love that comes to an end or is it a lasting relationship that goes the rest of your life and you know the you, you know the um the 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 um the journey to these paintings are the things that are that makes it a thrilling to uh, to get up every morning and, and do the sacrifices for them. But you know that uh, if it ever uh, if you ever woke up and you said, "Well, I can't paint anymore, or I can't dance, I can't play anymore, I can't write anymore, or whatever that thing that creative people get and they in that." Uh, through that occupation, you know, you were, when you you realize that it's um, it's uh, every day. It's sort of like every day struggle to uh, to uh, hope that it comes through you. You know, it's sort of like a blessing that it you have this and you want to keep it going. And uh, when you really uh, when you realize the only thing you can do is what you do, you know. And that's uh, the and the, the very few things that you can get to, you can find that fine point with in life, you know. Can you can you tell us for those of us that weren't there, you were in San Francisco studying art. Um, mm -hmm. You came to San Francisco in 1965. You graduated from the Art Institute in 1970 with your master's. It seems. In, in in San Francisco history and lore, that seems like it must have been one of the most exciting times for a creative person to be in San Francisco. Can you tell us what that was like? It was just like you described, it was incredible. I, when I got off the old Greyhound, well, that was the first time, but the second time I came out here, I got, I got off the train. <laughs> so when I got off the train, uh, I just knew this was the place. It was. It was. Um, it was a place for me to um, find out who the hell I was, because I. I. You, you. When you grow up in a small town, you're de you're defined by your surroundings. You know, you're told all the time who you are and what you are and where you are and, and the order of things and this and that. And uh, you go to a place where, like, you're uh, at a point when you're, like, grown enough to understand that dynamic and uh, realize that uh, you have a chance to really uh, look at yourself and find yourself uh, and to uh, see yourself sort of with a third eye, brand mm -hmm. new, 
rediscover and sort of create who you feel you are at that moment. That's what San Francisco offered to me, you know, the chance to find out. Mike Henderson, you know, who am I? I you know, was shaking this so forth and so on, you know. And you, you're doing something you really love, which is going to school and studying art and painting. You're doing this, you're around other people are doing it. The language is about that sort of lifestyle and so forth. The music in San Francisco was going on and the politics, that was all exciting to see. I, you know, I've maybe seen stuff like that uh, in the newspaper when the civil rights riots were going on. In the, in the early 60s and the 50s when I was living in Missouri in the South, you know, especially in Little Rock and Alabama and so forth. But anyway, uh, you come out here a place and you hear, uh, uh, you know, conversations are different. And when you also go to this place, the school, or San Francisco artists, the the language there is different and there's a community that's doing it. It's not just one or two or three people, you know. So you, you feel that there there's a a torch has been passed down in some way to uh to us uh as artists. And uh in in there is the place to find out if this is in you. I think if you find out that it's not in you, it will also show you what you should be doing too, you know. And not all um, artists are, 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 are makers of things in terms of like paintings and so forth like that. It also happens in the medical field and science field. And, you know, that's how uh, we landed on the moon through imagination, you know. So when I had to imagine that, and next thing you know, you figure out how to measure it and do it, you know. And the artist who'd offered that, you know, it's sad that it's closed, but uh, it was the only uh, true art school in the world. It had no um, design classes or anything like that. It was all about fine arts, and that doesn't exist anymore, you know, but it, which is a shame. But uh, anyway, um, I was blessed enough to be there and to uh, to uh, be part of that community and uh, had a chance to, uh, like I said, again, explore myself, you know, and sort of figure out who I was. And San Francisco was a great place for me to do my... Uh, Ulysses journey <laughs> parts of the city and the culture and meeting people from different cultures at the Art Institute and so forth and finding out the similarities and uh, what the uh, uh, the differences had in common with each other and everything you know and uh, Art was a great way to be able to examine that. You you then moved over, and I want to, we're going to share some examples of, the Haynes Gallery was kind enough to share examples with us of Mike's work, and we're going to get to that in a second. Before we do, I want you to talk a little bit, if you would, about, um, you, you then went on to become a professor of art at UC Davis at a time where a number of extraordinarily important um and celebrated california artists were also teaching there was there was a, another community that was happening um in uc davis's extraordinary art program can you tell us how you found your way to davis and and what that was like <laughs> uh, it's sort of like somebody said everything that great in life happens either is an accident or it was a mistake. <laughs> so somewhere in there, my 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 whole life lies. But uh, getting to Davis, um, when I came out here, going to school, one of the things that was sort of the uh, dialogue around the school with people who were more advanced uh, and so forth in art and so forth, I'd hear them talking about Davis and the seminars and so forth like that you know and uh i had no 
I heard about it, but wasn't really curious about it. And but because when I first came there, the, the one of the classes they had is like an orientation class. And uh, this guy uh, from Davis at the time, uh, Bruce uh, Norman, taught the class. And uh, he showed a few films, which I was definitely disappointed in because I thought they were going to be Westerns or <laughs> a movie. <laughs> he said, he's going to show a film. Yet I'm from Marshall, Missouri. I want to see a film. <laughs> But it was really short films, and one of them was uh, him man manipulating a, a tea bar, and uh, which became very important much later. And the other ones, uh, the other things he did was like uh, tie a string around the room with everybody in the doors and left the room. And the discussion was about why are we here and what was this about and you know is he controlling us or all you know all this stuff sort of kind of you know this is like uh at the same time back in marshall i would be sweeping the floor <laughs> but all of a sudden i'm thinking of this stuff you know and i'm going to zoom through you know and uh anyway i eventually met him and uh he, I knew that he was, people say, well, he's from Davis and the new art and what was going on and so forth. And I uh, talked to him a couple of times when I'd see him in the courtyard, you know, basically uh, my painting and so forth. But anyway, um, later, um, I guess when I came back from Skowhegan, Maine, I uh, got interested in filmmaking while I was there. And I went to, um, although I was showing films at the Art Institute, but but I didn't really um, watch them that much. Bruce Connors, it would show it in the courtyard and so forth, time and time, and George Couchard movies and so forth. But I was I was only interested in painting. It wasn't until uh, I guess again I came back from Skowhegan and Dr. King was killed, and I went down to the. I was working on a painting, and then I knew the uh, there was going to be a um, memorial for him at Civic Center. So I worked until I walked down there to the Civic Center and. This is the speeches and everything, and it was, it was a solemn sort of an event. I remember everybody sort of uh, left, and it was incredibly uh, diverse to the crowd was. And um, anyway, I get back to school, and I'm standing looking at my painting, and I wanted more movements from my figures. I figure. If there was a way of uh, uh, making a political painting stronger would be uh, to uh, have the figures move. You know, if someone could really witness those uh, atrocity events that were going on, they would, you would, you know, would slap them on the face and wake them up. You know, that was what mm. the work was trying to wake up the world around you. Are you seeing this? Are you hearing this? And as an artist, you feel that that's your calling too, to address the the voiceless, you know, just like we all need a doctor when we uh, get sick. And uh, we need the artist. That's, at least that's the way I evaluate it. You know, everybody has their own, has to find their own uh, um, philosophy for what they do and why they do it and to create yourself. So uh, that's what I, uh, that's that's my way of thinking, you know, you have to do that. And uh, when you, uh, then when you see, you see yourself as, as, as a part of nature, like a leaf, it may fall off the tree, but it also turns into something else and so forth and keeps doing it. And 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 you as an artist want to have that sort of uh, um, 
that sort of touch of nature in you that you know that you, your work will uh, speak to the next generation or this generation or whatever you know and to be able to uh speak to all the peoples you know like van gogh's painting spoke to me i mean they really woke me up when i first saw that show in kansas city but uh you know you you want to be able to speak to everyone you know i mean i never never met the man but jesus you know i don't know who to get along but uh that isn't important you know what's important is what he did you know and you want to give as much as you take so you want to be a part of everything part of the world and find a way as an artist to fit in there not just someone who you know who uh makes up and puts it on display and makes a few bucks you know you want to you want to be uh you want to every, every, you want to find that um, masterpiece in yourself that uh, you know uh, uh, painting that lasts through eternity that speaks to generations and generations and generations and so and creates other artists because that's one of the highest uh, thing you can get when you when you can uh, when you works. Um, stimulate someone to chase a dream and give their life to it you know I mean that's an incredible thing I'm gonna start sharing some of your work now as we're talking about it it seems appropriate um I tried to I tried to go here in chronological order um with the where we have 10 images to kind of look at and this one um can you can you tell us a little bit about this this is from the the 60s I believe Yes, this was a painting I did. I, I, um, I guess it was the first time when I really felt like uh, it was either uh, is there something in me? Like I was ready to really address that with this painting. I was uh, my I had spent a year out here, or whatever, and it was during a Christmas break first year at the artist we went home but went back to got one of those drive away cars with several people and everybody went to a different place and we were and we had one for coming back but uh i uh chose to drive back by myself because i didn't pick up anybody but anyway uh i uh was back there and uh after a couple of days, I, I just couldn't, I needed to get back to San Francisco. I was no longer, uh, um, could find a reason to be in Marshall, Missouri again, you know? And uh, so anyway, I I think it was uh day before New Year's, whatever it was, uh, I just grabbed everything, put it in the car, and started off uh, back to San Francisco. I uh, had the keys to the school uh, because I wor had worked on the jan a janitor crew, so I could go there and work as long as I want to, any time I want to. Go, you know, have the whole studio by myself or whatever I did. There were several other people who did that too, in different departments, but. Uh, anyway um there was this need i was wondering if what was going what was going to happen if i uh didn't make it through you know the year and uh and one of the things i thought about was uh, getting back to work and what was i going to paint and i was thinking about i mean we're coming through utah and it's the sun is about to set and it's uh i felt like i was in this canyon and uh and the snow was covering the ground everywhere and the sky is completely blue and it's this orange sun set against it and just right then it hit me it was like mike you got a paint uh, a painting called the last supper and it had to do with my uh un I guess uh, unresolved uh, answers about religion, especially Christianity and so forth. And um, 
I realized that, uh, you know, as a kid, I always wondered, you know, why was the, uh, why were we treated so badly as a people and still worship a white God? And and that was something I saw that was uh, was sort of controlling. And I wanted to uh, uh, speak about that because I never could talk to anyone about it, you know, because growing up, you know, you can't ask questions about stuff like that, you know, you get slapped in the mouth, you know. So like I said, again, you know, when I got out here, um, there was the, uh, that was what's driving me. So this painting came out of this, this need to, uh, to, to loosen up to, uh, I had these knots in my stomach when I was driving. I just wanted to get back to work and paint. There's, I didn't know what it was going to be or whatever, but this painting, um, I had a whole uh, week before school started back again so I could work on it and so forth. And uh, I had, uh, you know, it went through many different stages, <laughs> I gotta say, you know, and uh, I wasn't, I wasn't happy until I felt uh, this release when I was using my hands in this and, you know, just, I don't know, my whole body was screaming and so forth. And, uh, and this was a subject that was, uh, was that I wanted to uh, have a conversation with, uh, about with someone. And, uh, and it, it wasn't meant to be, it was supposed to be a painting, you know, and I began to see how, for later, how, these 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 feelings or these things come out of you and where they come from you know and so forth you have to bring something to the table you know you just can't you know stand there people think well you know oh you get drunk and you <laughs> drink a bottle of whiskey or you get high and you you got you know, you attack the paint no the you know i mean you can't do that there's no law against it but uh but for me, uh, I I wanted to sort of uh, find a pathway, you know, because one of the things I also wanted to do was uh, I wanted to be the 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 first in my family that uh, that that broke the broke the pattern, you know. I mean, there was a lot of. Uh, Hendersons and Shannons, you know, my father from Henderson, my mother from Shannon's father, uh, on both sides, the, on both sides that that uh, that it had existed, and I couldn't find or think of anybody who who seemed like it was everything was repeated. You know, the struggle for existence, struggle for this, you know, struggle. It's always the struggle, but. Uh, I guess they didn't have the keys to understand that for whatever reasons. And I wanted, so it was up to me as I saw it to uh, say, okay, generations from now, somebody can say, yeah, I had a relative that did something or, you know, or did something other than survive, you know, or chase a dream or something. Because that's something we are always taught, you know, is like you got to do the realistic thing here. You know, there's no, you can't, you know, you're not going to be that. You're not this. You're not that. You're constantly told those things, you know. And uh, there, uh, people always seem to want to put limits on uh, human potential, you know. But uh, like I said again, it's. Uh, it's just stuff that people do, you know. You get to yeah. you know, all the cats don't do it, <laughs> but people do, you know. I want to talk more about. I'm gonna I'm gonna move forward to um, the scream, which is perhaps one of your most famous paintings. Um, and then we'll take some questions for the audience as I kind of move through the rest. Again, these paintings you can see. Um, at one of the two current exhibitions. This also, this you did with your hands. Did you 
what, what I know you worked in a number of different mediums and mixed media film and music and, and different kinds of paints, but is there something more that do you express something different? Are you trying to express something more urgent, more visceral when you are painting with your literal body? It was what I felt at the time. Like I said, again, when I was doing the painting of The Last Supper, which was, you know, sort of like open the, when I found that there was another freedom there and there was a way to release those knots in my stomach and, 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 and feel like, uh, um, you finally got to a different plateau or something. The work has shown you something else there. And it's exciting, you know, when you realize that uh, it can point the way to something else and there's there's more. Let's see if there's more like this in you, you know, you're trying to get there again. And uh, so that whole sort of energy was very physical then with the paint and so forth. I like to think that it still is now, but it, it doesn't always need what these needed at the time, you know? So it's, I feel like it's still in me if it was, if that was what was needed. The whole thing you have to worry about sometimes is, uh, is uh, imitating yourself, you know, and being very, uh, very uh free with uh with with your preconceived ideas uh, uh you have to be very careful of being very free with those preconceived ideas of how you got from here today and how you're gonna get there tomorrow you know i mean it's it's great to do with words and think about stuff like that but uh you have to be really in the moment and adjust each to each one because each one is different you know just like when you have children you know uh, you have to uh, when they're all babies they're similar you know once they start growing up their personalities start coming out and you know, like I said again each painting is sort of like that you know it has something that it shows you it's a relationship you have with it it tells you what it needs you have to be um um open enough to uh realize that this is coming to you a lot of it is just you know getting over your uh mental state with uh or uh, about your preconceived idea you know what art is or what it isn't is, you know and just let your uh um, to see if there's something in you you know you just gotta trust that and uh, even if it isn't, like I say again, then you know what to do next. But uh, the painting has uh, this was uh, this was the way I felt inside when I was talking about the uh, Last Supper painting. And I wanted at this point the next thing to do after I did the large uh, uh, Last Supper was to do two canvas, a bigger painting of it. You know, like I say again. Each time I would try to uh, challenge myself, I saw when I got at the Art Institute, there was always somebody who was, I mean, the place was full of good painters, I thought, very good, you know? And I was from the Marshall, Missouri, the heck, you know? I didn't know deadly, so I, I felt that it would be defeating myself if I tried to compete with the, uh, the other students, you know? And uh, so the only thing I figured, well, Mike, you should compete with yourself the next thing you do to the next thing you do. So I never had that uh, uh, thing that uh, that some people get with, uh, well, I, I, so-and-so is better than me. And I, I, it ain't in me because they, they do, you know, all that stuff's there, you know, and I ran into people who quit or dropped out because of that whatever, uh, and some that talked about it, you know, but I never had that. I just found, the, I, just, I sort of made the, like I say again, um, a path for myself to uh, get through all of these things, you know. Uh, maybe because I was, you know, I was born dyslexic, so uh, 
you sort of have to uh, create a lot of your life uh, differently, you know, to uh, the same way that everybody else has to, but it's, you know, words is how you use words and so forth, but that comes much later. But yeah, this painting was, uh, was like this giant release from me. And, uh, and you, like I said, again, digging in the paint screen and trying to get this, this, this um, anger about, you know, the, the uh, uh, more poetic, poetic way of saying it now, us as people um, wasting our time with war and destruction and hate and prejudice and violence and all of this stuff. It made no sense to me. You know, um, what if everybody was, uh, but, you know, then later you find there are people who were warm <laughs> and that's what they do. You know, there's, uh, you know, we all have a blind side and so does life, you know. So there's questions that don't have answers, you know. And, uh, uh, you know, so you do what you do uh why you here you know otherwise you know uh, all you did is come and worry <laughs> um wise words i want to ask you a couple more questions just as i go through your art and then we'll get to audience questions one is that this this was done in the late 60s i believe um in response as you mentioned to violence to bigotry racism the war at the time in vietnam it is still lauded and celebrated today because it is still so relevant is that how does that feel were you hoping that it wouldn't be relevant in 2023 the the fact that these are still such powerful and and important and issues that we continue to really 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 struggle with i was never that smart to think that <laughs> no i i i i don't know what i thought but i know i didn't think that but uh you know it was just something you felt like you had to do you know because i've seen it in um I remember the great lectures, uh, art history at the Art Institute, uh, Fred Martin's art history class, and him talking about Goya, you know, and some of those, uh, and also uh, the Inquisition work, and you know, and how, and other many other artists who were involved in uh, um, uh, speaking about. Uh, uh the times they exist guernica so forth and all of these paintings like that they like i say again the ones that seem to have um some sort of uh um timeless space through time or um or or um ones that are about the human condition and I think, like I said, again, as an artist, I, I feel like uh, your, 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 your job is you have to uh, um, uh, um, uh, address that question um, as, an, as an artist or as a musician or whatever, you have to address that question, you know, you know, and uh, if, um, and when you do, you don't get answers, but you do get uh, uh, fragment possibilities of shards of, uh, of uh, stimulations from uh, the answers or something. And what you do with them is up to each individual, how you read them. But uh, I really feel that, uh, that you have to uh, address the times that you it, uh, saw something or did something, you know, uh, you have to approach uh, uh, the human existence in some way, life, you know, uh, art about art to me is, uh, you know, sort of boring, you know, uh, art for art's sake, you know, 
but I think, uh, you know, it's, you can feel that way sometimes in the studio that you're only making them for yourself, but, uh, you know, it, it, there's nothing wrong with that either. It was, uh, I worked for many years when I had no outlet for my work except uh, the corner in the studio where I could store it, you know. But uh, I, I, I don't know if I thought about, uh, yeah, you always think about, you know, like, like, like one day I, I was headed to the museum, then I turned around because I realized what I was going to look for would be my, one of my works. That's what I was missing. So I realized psychologically that's what was going on in me. So I, but I, but I also had to accept at one point, maybe would never make it to the museum or, or anybody's uh, eyes, but my own. And uh, it still was a uh, 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 strong enough for me to say, uh, um, I still want to do it. You know, the pull of it, the pull of it, you know. I was just, uh, you know, this was me. There was nothing else for me, you know. And if all I wanted was something from it, then it wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't it wasn't a 50 50 relationship it was all about one person you know it would just be about me my ego whatever that it might turn out to be so um you you have to you have to um sort of trust that uh, something would happen you know somebody would see it you know because when you really study art history, you'll find there are so many great artists were never relevant in that time because of politics or race or whatever, or gender, you know, or they just didn't like the work or, you know, the artist has a right to uh, be in front of the times, you know, in some sort of way, you know, you have to, if otherwise you're just like, uh, you know, um, top 40 record, you know, boom, gone, next one, boom, boom, you know, I mean, it's about the, 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 the long haul, the long run, you know, and that's what, that's what uh, I felt it was for me, you know, I didn't know any ways of, uh, of making it uh, easy or whatever. I learned so much from it, and uh, it gave me a reason to get up every morning, exciting for the next day. And um, I know that, uh, like I say again, uh, when the fire happened, when I thought it was all taken away, uh, was like uh, it was like uh, something that sort of. Uh, still stimulated me in a different way. I don't know if I can put it in words, but I, like I say again, because I was, I was sorry for the loss, saddened by that, but also uh, I felt that I could still continue, you know, and so coming back to the States was the, uh, was a big sort of uh, 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 um, thing too because I didn't know if I wanted because I felt there were more opportunities for me in Europe mm -hmm. and uh, felt like uh, that was something that I wanted to but I didn't want to leave the states because I've been burned out <laughs> well, know, and, and the fire we should mention for those that don't know is that there was a fire in I forget what year 83 85 in which a number of your your pieces were either lost or damaged you you thought that they were completely gone but yeah. um i was told yeah originally that everything was gone so i was sort of like then when i got back i found a little bit later that there was there were things you know there you figure out you know you think, there's there's something here you know and that's what i wanted to find out when I got off the plane, when you get off the plane, you say, uh, you realize that uh, 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 every inch of the ground is 
owned by someone. There's no place to set or hide or that you wouldn't be on somebody's property. This whole planet has been divided up in these sections. And uh, it does something to you, you know? And uh, you always know it, but, uh, you know, um, but, uh, you know, you never feel it, to feel it that way. And 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 like I said again, um, I had to. I realized I needed to change my whole life. That it was a way of all of a sudden it was like 1965 for me in a different way, and it was this uh, major challenge to see, uh, you know, if I was going to stay or go or or what was going to happen, you know. Uh, that's why I got married so late in life, you know, was, uh, like I said, again, I didn't want to have a family and raise it in poverty like I grew up in, because that was just totally hell, it just seems unfair, but, uh, but, um, um, you know, you, you make sacrifices for stuff, and then the whole thing was to, well, see if you could fit in like the, uh, the, the normal person, you know, because I lived in Mike's world for a long time, and that was one of the things the fire taught me was, hey, I could die having it my way, and what would that really mean to me? It mean absolutely nothing, you know. So it was a finding a way to be more involved with uh, with with life as it came every day, and so forth. And um, and find a way of picking up the brush again, you know, and all of that. So it was a very, it was a wake up call, but it was also a new canvas too to create to find out. Okay, the new mic. You're you're getting older now, you know. I mean, I couldn't I couldn't go off and go to the art institute right now, even if it was open, you know. I mean. <laughs> I had to be young and dumb to go through what I went through. When I think about it, it's funny because, you know, all, through all of these things that have happened, I've been talking about it, and I sometimes I say, what the hell was I thinking? <laughs> I never thought of what if at all, you know? <laughs> It was okay, you know, the next thing, you know, I'll sit here till the next thing comes, you know. <laughs> uh, but, you know, one of the things about growing old, you learn, you learn how to worry about everything and, and just chew it all to pieces, you know, <laughs> and bring all the negativity that your brain can muster into everything you think about, you know. So um, you sort of see it differently, like, you know, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Well, your your introspection and your longevity and and your continued um, kind of willingness to look at yourself and learn from yourself is so inspiring. We are so far past out of time, folks. If you want to know more, I know we got some questions about blues. You can read um, more about that in Marcus's amazing article in Alta. I am so so very grateful. Um, to the incredible Mike Henderson for joining us today. I want to remind you that Mike Henderson, before the fire, 1965 to 1985, runs now through June 25th. In fact, just after your birthday, if I'm not mistaken, Mike. Um, I don't have many more. I'm sorry? <laughs> <Y 'all, y 'all. laughs> As Betty David says, only a fool celebrates getting older. <laughs> <laughs> um, I love that one. <laughs> we'll, we'll go see that. That's at the Shrum Museum at UC Davis um, and visit. You can see more of his work at the Haynes Gallery. Um, join us next week. We're so excited to welcome gun violence prevention activist Alec Foster will be our guest. That's the um, Wednesday, February 22nd here at Alta Live. And again, Mike Henderson, just an honor to get to know you and, and talk about your work well, today. Thank pleasure. you so much. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. And thanks, everyone. Take care.